Welcome back to Lavender Recap. In today's video, we'll be going through an American horror comedy movie from the year 2011 entitled The Cabin in the Woods. If you're visiting this channel for the first time, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Spoilers ahead, so watch out and take care. The film begins with two middle-aged men wandering through some sort of facility talking about trivial topics like marriage and possible children, while a younger woman in a lab coat tries to inform them about an event at the Stockholm facility. Dana and Jules are discussing school in a room in a college town. Kurt, Jules' boyfriend, enters and tosses a football at the girls. The boys come to pick it up. The female's in the RV for a long weekend at Kurt's cousin's lakeside cabin. When their pal Marty pulls up in his car, smoking weed from a massive bong that turns into a travel mug, they're about to go. We return to the previously observed facility where two middle-aged men, Sitterson and Hadley, are watching everything unfold on TV screens. They appear to have been drugging the kids in various ways, but they don't specify why. When the gang stops for gas and directions, they're near the cabin. Mordecai, the attendant, assures them that getting to the cabin would be easy, coming back would be difficult. They drive away as everyone climbs back into the RV. They get to the cabin and they must pass through a U-shaped tunnel in the mountain. A bird tries to fly across the ravine as they pass through it, but it collides with an invisible shield and dies. Meanwhile, back at the facility, Mordecai reports that the college kids are on their way to the cabin and warns them that the reveler nearly ruined everything for them and that they should be cautious. He becomes enraged when Hadley puts him on speakerphone and he hangs up while Hadley and Sitterson chuckle. They arrive at the cabin and unpack their belongings. They're still being watched by the facility's security cameras. In the cabin, Holden discovers a terrible painting and takes it down. Behind it is a mirror that serves as a one-way window into Dana's next room. Holden rushes into Dana's room and informs her of the situation, after which they switch rooms. The facility has assembled to lay bets on the destiny of the folks in the cabin. Meanwhile, in the cabin, everybody starts playing truth or dare. Jules dares to make out with a wolf head on the wall. After then, it's Dana's turn. When the door to the cellar swings open, shocking everyone, she chooses dare. They challenge her to descend the cellar. She does and the others follow suit. Dana takes out a diary and writes, Hello there guys, take a look at this. Everyone else walks over to her, putting down whatever they were looking at. The diary was written by a young girl who had been beaten by her father. There's a feeling that they'll all come back when someone reads the Latin lines at the end of the diary. Diana reads Latin against Marty's advice, and somewhere outside, the family from the diary emerges from the graves, zombie-like. The kids return to the main room of the cabin. Kurt takes Jules for a walk through the woods, and they begin to have sex in the woods, but the zombies stop them. Kurt protects Jules after she gets stabbed in the hand. He's stabbed in the shoulder, yet he pulls through. Kurt watches as Jules is recaptured and beheaded. He escapes and returns to the cabin. Hadley and Sitterson chant what appears to be a prayer as Jules dies. Hadley pushes a lever, causing blood to flow into a groovestone tablet in the shape of a female figure, the whore. When Mary steps outside, he sees Kurt sprinting towards him, finding a zombie. Kurt informs everyone that Jules died, and then a voice from the facility orders them to break up, but only Marty is aware of it. He begs the others not to part away, but no one listens and Dana, Holden, and Marty go to their separate ways. But a zombie bursts through the window and drags Marty outdoors. He gets stabbed in the back and then dragged away. And then there are the bad noises. He's in such a bad situation. A zombie is now attempting to break through Dana's window. Holden breaks the glass between the rooms and brings her into his after hearing this in the adjacent room. They discover a door on the floor that leads to a basement room. They try to get out, but the door will not open. One of the zombies comes across them and stabs Holden in the back. Dana continually stabs the zombie while Kurt opens the door from the other side. They board the RV as a trio. Meanwhile, Hadley discovers that the demolition crew failed to set off the explosion that causes the tunnel to cave in and prevent their departure. But when the RV gets halfway into the tunnel, it begins to cave in. Luckily, Kurt has a dirt bike in the RV and decides to take over, but just like the bird, he collides with the invisible wall and dies. Dana and Holden return to the cabin, attempting to find a way out. The RV crashes into the lake after Holden is stabbed in the head. There was a zombie in the RV, it turned out. Dana defeats the zombie and escapes through the overhead hatch, swimming to the surface. She makes it onto the pier before the zombie emerges from the ocean and begins abusing her. They're celebrating a fantastic night back at the facility. The virgin doesn't appear to be required to die for the plot to succeed. Because all of the other sites have failed to finish the ritual, this is critical. The red phone begins to ring. Had the response, a tense discussion ensues. The rules, it appears, were not followed. One of the others has survived. They will lose if Dana dies first. Meanwhile, Marty appears out of nowhere and beats the zombie with his massive bong until he drowns. He snatches Dana and leads her into the woods. He dives into one of the zombie-infested graves and begins digging. 
He opens the door and they fall into a chamber just as the zombies are about to capture them. This was all staged, Marty informs Dana. He found an access panel and began tinkering with the cables within, which is why the tunnel never burst his plan. Dana is concerned about using the elevator that Marty shows her, but they don't have any other options. Dana and Marty can see numerous other elevators through the glass window of their elevator, all of which contain supernatural beings linked to the bizarre artifacts in the cabin's basement. The Sugar Plum Fairy, the Puzzle Ball, the Doll Faces, the Deadly Bride, and a slew of more characters. Dana sees the connection and deduces that the gang chose the zombies as the means of their own demise in the basement. The Watchers, meanwhile, are in a tizzy because Dana and Marty have broken into their facility. They devise a plot to assassinate Marty to maintain the desired sequence of the sacrificial deaths. An armed guard is dispatched to them with the mission of killing both of them. Marty's first, but he fails when the zombie corpse in the elevator distracts him. Dana and Marty assassinate him and flee into the corridor. More armed guards arrive and open fire, forcing them to flee into what appears to be a control room where they hide while randomly pushing buttons. Dana discovers a huge one labeled Purge System and sirens begin to sound across the facility. The guards all pause in dread and then the elevator doors open, revealing monster after monster. The troops are slaughtered and the monsters infiltrate the facility, slaying the workers in all regions. Marty and Dana are besieged by monsters but they managed to escape by climbing through a hole created by one of the walls collapsing during the chaos. Hadley finally sees his merman in the facility's control room just before it kills him. Sterson activates an escape hatch and emerges into a stone corridor, but he's tragically murdered by Dana. Dana and Marty have also ended up here. Kill him, Sterson tells Dana before he dies. Dana is hesitant to continue, but Marty hands her a revolver that he snatched from a dead guard. Marty and Dana find themselves in a room filled with character outlines. Dana notices five stone tablets, one for each of them. Dana, Marty, Holden, Kurt, and Jules. Everything that has happened to them has been a rite of passage. They knew the director's voice from the one that talked to them over the PA system. She describes the facility and its function. She states that the ritual is older than everything known to mankind. She and her peers aren't certain of everything, but is conducted all over the universe to appease the dark gods who once ruled the earth. The director adds that the ceremony is intended to keep them asleep and that it must adhere to certain guidelines. There are a total of five sacrifice victims. The whore Jules is the first to die, followed by four other archetypes, scholar, athlete, fool, and virgin. It makes no difference in which sequence they die as long as the whore is the first to die and the virgin is the last to survive. The director claims that it's up to the gods whether Dana, the virgin, lives or dies to save the world. When Dana raises the gun to shoot Marty, he's injured. She's conflicted, but she doesn't want the world to end. Dana is attacked by a werewolf without notice and she's badly mauled. Marty picks up the gun when she drops it and fires at the werewolf who flees injured. The director tries to murder Marty, but the diary zombie girl emerges and murders him instead. Marty tosses them both into the god's pit. Dana and Marty put on makeup and light a joint while debating the end of the world. The ground begins to tremble and break. The cabin in the woods begins to tremble. As the first of the old gods reaches the surface, a massive hand smacks into it and slams down on the earth in front of it. What are your thoughts on this film? Leave a comment below. Leave a comment below.